originally, the last couple of weeks, God has been doing something great in this place. Um, anytime God does something great, it always try to be some some backlash or some uh, the enemy trying to get back. But I trust God. I remember last Sunday I was telling y'all guys after I got back that it was a, like a mass relapse, um, and I was talking about the substance use and and mental health. Um, um, and this week has been the same. We can even see in the news where we had two celebrities who took their life um, due to uh, suicide, suicidal tendencies, mental health, depression. And God, that's what God gave me to talk about, depression. Um, and this wasn't originally what I was uh, going to talk about. I had a message. I had my wife get the chapters, write it all up. And I woke up Saturday morning. Um, I want y'all to pay attention to the time when you just waking up, like you're not even out of bed. It seemed like that's when God talked to me, and it's like I get it all at once, so it's not a long talk. I just know. It's like a knowing. You just know. And it's typically usually like as soon as I open my eyes, and I'm like, and I'm coming out, and it's like boom, right there, and I know. And so I keep my pad, my phone right there, and I just start it. And I, that's, that's when God usually, uh, for me, usually it is just as soon as I'm waking up. It feel like it's just like boom, um, and that's what he did on that's what he did on Saturday. And so the whole message I had, I was like, you might as well just get rid of that, like, cause now I got something else. And so I want to address uh, depression, mental health, uh, suicidal thoughts, because I think the church got a misconception about it. And I like a lot of times we think everything is a demon, and sometimes it is a, a spirit of heaviness, a spirit of depression, and all that. We know it originates in that. But it don't necessarily mean you gotta demonize the person. Uh, people can have residual effects from traumatic incidents that happened a long time ago, and so it's in the psyche, it's in the mind, and so they may need some type of counseling, they might need some kind of therapeutic thing. Um, and so uh, a, whole, a whole approach, not just one side. And I think uh, sometimes we look at it as one side, one side. And so I wanna talk about it. I wanna talk about it even in so much that um, on, on, on Wednesday, um, I was leaving work, and I got a call from my sister. Um, who, she's about 30, 32, something like that. And I raised her. I raised her. I brought her here. I put her in school. Uh, my mom get cussed. And, and I couldn't even understand. I can't take it anymore. I can't do it. And I, and I, where, where you at? Where you at? And she was just in the middle of traffic. And... Um, and she couldn't do it no more. She, I can't do it. But, and I couldn't, where you at? And I, and I, and I, so I had to find her. I had to find her. Um, and I found her. And it was at the time school was letting out. And so her daughter was at, she couldn't even, couldn't drive, she left, yeah, couldn't do nothing. Um, the weight of whatever was going on had took a toll to her and she just paralyzed, couldn't move, just crying, sitting in the car, in the parking lot when I found her. Um, I got her to get in the car with me and then um, she didn't want her daughter to see it like that. Because now you feel like you're a bad mom, right? You can't, you understand, she, you know, I can't do it. It's too much for me. I don't want to be like this. It didn't used to be like this. How did I get like this? Why is it happening to me? And my baby keeps seeing this, and I treat my baby bad, and I don't want to treat my baby bad. And she shouldn't have to go through my crying moments and my sad moments in my life. She shouldn't even have to see that. And so she, all these things going in her mind. And so I get in the car, and then... Um, she said, T take me to your house, because I wanted her to see me there, so I took her to my house, then I went to the school to get my niece, and uh, I got her, and I was able to, you know, talk to her. Um, our house is a house of peace. I, my, God resides in my house. I, I'm going to tell you, my house is calm, and, and there's no chaos, and none, none of that. And so she was there uh, for a long time until we was able, she was able to, um, you know, uh, be okay. You know, my niece was there, she was praying. It's a family atmosphere. My dad came. We don't have much family, but my dad came over. And we just was there. And it's like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to say you're not okay. It's okay to say I'm not all right right now. And I think a lot of times, uh, even in Christendom, um, we don't want to admit that we're not okay. So we got to fake like we okay. We got to act like we okay. But I'm going to talk about this thing today because, and I'm going to show you in the Bible where there have been great people of God that did many things and been suicidal. Yeah. This is a topic that we typically stay away, stay away from. But I want to address this thing because I don't want you to think that you're alone. 
Everybody, everybody, one thing about it is that everybody thinks that nobody understands. When reality is this, most of us in here has been through it or going through it right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh? Let's talk about it. Right? Right? And even on that same day, this, this how this, that same day that's going on. So she tell me, my son, wife, call her, it's so my son, same thing. And so now my dad comes. So now I gotta go pick him up. Because of his mental health that wasn't like that, but the traumatic incidents with I played a part in it too. His mom, we getting high, whatever, whatever. I leave, and then he's suffering. He's getting burnt by the stem, whatever. No lights on, whatever. And now, now it's all coming back to haunt him. He has got triggered by he just grown, smell some coke, remind him of boom, and bet he back. Now he's all jacked up. Quick work, just you know. And so I'm like, man. And I told you that it's been a week of heaviness and, 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 and it's been a week of a mass, everybody kind of breaking down. And people get embarrassed and ashamed about breaking down. Then they stop showing up. It's okay to break down. If you have a break, it's okay to say, I, I'm having a breakdown on going through. You don't got to be embarrassed. You don't, and you're still in God. God you. You're still in God and God still loves you. Even in your brokenness, right? Is that the truth, right? Yeah. Some stuff is um, chemically imbalanced. If it, it, it's in the brain, some, it's, it's a, a variety of things that happen. You don't have to take it out on yourself. But you should have somebody or that you can reach out to, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Y'all yeah. scared to talk about this? Are y'all scared to talk about this? Let's talk about this. Because the church is trying to skin around it. And they got like, you got a problem, and they got more problems than you got. <laughs> right? And then when they come, you go talk to them, they be like, he crazy. And they say, I got pastors calling me to tell me to talk to somebody else. Now even like you, I ain't mean, but you know, like, another pastor called me to get with you. Like, how the fool is this at? Yeah. Wow. She a better fit over there. You know what he, what the kind of fool is this at? You don't know God like I know God? You can't help that man? I don't care if you ain't never been in prison. You've been in trouble before. You've been lost. You've been in sin before. You can say you've never been in sin before. You don't know how to identify being disconnected from God. What you talking about, man? That's what's called dropping people off at. <laughs> Happen all the time. Just drop people off at. Don't want to counsel marriages. Go talk to him. Tired of dealing with you. Tired of dealing with us. I'm tired of the phonies. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. And I'm saying in this place, it's okay to say you're not okay. You don't have to put a fake smile on for me. Because guess what? Some days I'm not okay. I'm not okay some days. It's the day that my sister called me. I was, man, I'm crying like a baby. I ain't even got, I seen her from a distance seen her in the car. And I could see she was all the pieces. I was crying like a baby. By the time I got to it, I, you know, I got myself together. But I was crying like a baby. You know why? Because she asked me questions. Why I gotta be like this? Why this gotta happen to me? I don't wanna be like this. I don't wanna be the crazy girl. That's what she said. I don't wanna be the crazy girl. I don't wanna be known for being crazy. I don't wanna be searching drug seeking because I feel this way. Because that's what happened, right? Because now we're searching for the feeling and it's trying to make it go away. And so now we're searching for drugs. I was crying like a baby. Because guess what? No amount of money can help that. I can't help, I can't, you right here for me, and I can't do nothing for you, baby. I can't do nothing for you. Do you know what it feels like to have one of your kids or your grandbabies right in front of you, and they saying I'm hurting, and you can't do nothing to either hurt your husband, your wife? You can't do nothing, do you understand how that feels to be hopeless, and you can't even help the ones you love? Hey, we're gonna talk about it. And so I'm gonna talk about seven lessons. Put it, put the scripture up. Seven lessons about depression. Seven lessons about depression. And we're gonna look at Elijah, a suicidal prophet. A suicidal prophet. I'm gonna read the whole chapter, it's 21 verses, so that I can just we can get an idea of what's going on. And it says. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. 
and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of the one of them by, excuse me, by tomorrow about this time. Excuse me. Verse 3 says, and he, and he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey to the wilderness and, and came and sat down on a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he may what? Die. That he may die and said, it is enough. Have you ever said enough is enough? Have you ever went through fight after fight after fight and you're trying to do right and you're trying to get right and you can't right and you say, God, that's enough. He says, it's enough. I want to be where I don't want to be like this, but I'm like this. God, that's enough. I'm working for you. I have done a whole lot of things, but people still coming after me. It's enough. That's enough. It's enough. He said, now, oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking under a coals and a curse of water at his head. A cruise of water at his head and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and he went in the strength of that meeting 40 days and 40 nights unto her, the mount of God. And he came thither unto the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Eli? What are you doing here? Why are you hiding? Why are you by yourself? Why have you cut everybody off? Why are you in this dark place? When, why not? Like, why are you not reaching out to nobody? What, what? What? What are you doing in this place? And he said, "I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it. And he said, "Look." He said, and he said, and I, even." I only said, only I am left. And that's what the enemy do. He always tell you and try to isolate you and try to say, nobody knows the truth. Don't nobody understand what he, he said, it's only me, God. It's only me. Everybody's against me. It's only me. It's only me. And that's one of the tricks of the enemy to try to tell you you by yourself. And the people that's connected to you don't care about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Divide and conquer. Isolate. Begin the isolation. Come on, let me go like two more verses and I'm going to stop we'll get into it. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and a strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces and the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire a, a, a still small voice. I think I gotta go about the 17. Keep going. And it was so. And Elijah heard it, and he wrapped his face in his mantle and went up and stood in the, and entered in the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, Why doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous of the Lord. It seemed like a repeated conversation of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with a sword. And I, and only I, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go return uh, on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest unto Hazel uh, to be king of Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi, uh, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah the son of Shep 
Shaphtat, and Abimelech, hmm, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it came to pass that he that escaped the sword of Hazar shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha Elis slay. I'm going to stop right there. And so I want to use this story as a, a this, this as a, like a, a canvas to talk about depression to point out seven things, uh, seven lessons that we can uh, learn from depression. And we know that Elijah was a powerful man of God. He was a, a prophet of God. He wasn't a joke. Some of his accolades include raising a widow son from the dead. He raised a, a, a widow son from the dead. He spoke out against the tyranny of the monarchy. Uh, God fed him by ravens. God fed him in the and the winners by ravens. Uh, he beat a horse on a race foot. This, so this is a man that had uh, great accolades in God that did big things in God, and still you find himself in depression. Huh? And, and so you you see, and uh, you say, well, uh, let me let me take go back to verse four. Let's read verse four. What did it say? He said, but he himself went a day's journey and went into the wilderness and came uh, and sat down on a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough. Oh, now, O oh Lord, take away my life uh, for I am not better than my father's. And so that sounds like it's suicide to me. Do it seem like it to y'all? Mm -hmm. It seemed like he was giving up. It seemed like all hope is gone. Even after he had been to the mountaintop and he had seen what God had done and God had used him to raise dead, to beat the horses. God had used him for magnificent things, but still he found his place in, a, in, in, in depression and alone and going in the wilderness in a dry place, disconnected from the people of God. He found himself hiding when he knew that the power of God worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He still found himself hiding because of Jezebel. Uh, that's a whole nother story. But, 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 but he found himself hiding and he knew the power of God. He knew the strength of God. He knew what God do. But he still found himself in a moment of depression when he don't even want to live. When he said it's too much for me. Sometimes it's too much. Sometimes it's too much. It's okay to realize and come to the realization. It's too much. I got kids. I got grandbabies. I got work. I got church. I got, I, it's too much. It's too much. I'm trying to help everybody out, and I can't even help myself out. I'm going through my own go through, and I gotta help somebody else. It's too much. So no. God, I'm like, it's enough. It's enough. And so we see that we can find our place in here, no matter how much God you got, no matter how much he used, no matter how anointed you are, you still can find yourself in a place where you're sad and you're lonely and you feel disconnected and you're depressed and you want to give up. Huh? Hey, that's the real message. That's the real message. And even when we look in the Bible, it's, it was multiple people. We look at Moses, David. You can look at Job. You can look at Judas. You can look at Samson. You can look at Saul. You can, you can look at a multiple people and see that they wanted to give up. Then they were saying, I, I, it's enough. I want to go. I want to leave. I'm tired. That's enough. And so it's okay. It's okay. This is number one. Depression can often come after big achievements. Depression, number one is, depression can come after you accomplish something big. After you obtain something. After you start feeling good about yourself, depression got a way of trying to creep in. After a, they call that a mountain experience. A lot of times, a, it's, it's, a, it's a hard transition from a mountain experience to a valley, God, to a valley experience. And so then you begin to question God. God, I just was up here and everything was good. I felt good. I was hearing everything you were saying. Everything was working out. God, how I get down there? Yeah. How I get down there? How I get down there? And so, sometimes it's after the biggest highlights of your career or what you're doing in God. It's a Here's what happened just a few hours before he was asking God to take his life. 
This would happen just a few hours before he was in that place. He prayed for rain, and it came down after a seven-day drought. This is hours. God just, he prayed, and it rained. Can you imagine praying and it rained after a drought? You know God with you. You know God used you. That's, that, that was just hours. He had just called down an extra fire from heaven. He called down fire from heaven to burn up those idols just hours before that happened. The nation of Israel had turned back to God. Everything seemed to be going right. He had just taken about taken out 850 pagan prophets in the, in the showdown. He got a, a Jedi speed when he outran a king's chariot. He outran a horse under the power and the anointing of God. And so we can say things were going well for him. Things was going well, yet it all took, all it took was a threat from Queen Jezebel to send him shaking, fleeing, and fearing for his life, and feeling suicide. All it took is a threat from Jezebel. A threat. I mean, he ain't even hurt. He ain't even get attacked. He just, just somebody sent a bad word, or, or sent a bad bone, and then it destroyed all, all that he had already accomplished by somebody speaking something. Talking about the power of word, the power of uh, life and death in the tongue. Who you listen to, what they say. Jezebel. Jezebel ain't nothing anyway. Jezebel need a weak man anyway. That's a, Jezebel had behind a weak man. It ain't about her skirt and that. She using a weak man to do what she do. Huh? Let's talk about it. Jezebel always need a weak man. <clears throat> but she sent a word. She said she just sent a word, uh, and then he he take on that word, and then he begin to shake, he begin to trim. After all that God done, you mean you scared of Jezebel? After all that God just done hours before, you scared of her? You scared of her? But it sent him high. It sent him high. And so he began. He found himself in the valley. A lot of times we can find in our own lives, we always will face uh, or experience great discouragement immediately after great achievements. And so you got to prepare yourself. We got to prepare ourselves. Don't be scared. Don't be paranoid. Don't be, don't be worried about it. But just understand that when God does something great, the enemy is going to try to counter that so that you can take your focus off of God. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so you got to understand this. You got to understand that we're in a spiritual battle. The enemy will just let you get away with getting away with anything. And everything that he throw, throw at you is just it's an illusion. He can't do nothing. He just throw a power of a thought inside of your mind. Mm -hmm. The power of a thought. We take the thought and we run with it. Huh? One thought? We said, oh, and I'm going to lose my job, and then I ain't going to be the kids, and then I'm going to lose the house, they'll put the furniture outside, and then, huh? <laughs> yeah. The power of the thought. The next thing is this. When depressed, we have a tendency to isolate ourselves. When we, when we begin to get depressed or move into that state or that sense, we begin to cut everything off. Mm -hmm. We begin to cut people off. That's why I say, then he went alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat on the juniper tree. When we get depressed, we got a tendency to isolate ourselves. And so, that is a telltale sign of depression. And unfortunately, that can hurt you better than it can help you. And so, the second thing is isolating ourselves. But I want you to know that's how you can tell you moving into a depressed state. And if you and a lot of times that'll make you worse than it will make you better. Amen. We got that? Mm -hmm. Alright. Number three, we're gonna move right along. Depression tells us that we're alone. Depression tells us that we're alone. Not only do we isolate ourselves physically, but depression often is a very isolating experience emotionally and psychologically. 
And so it's not just the physical disconnection, it's the emotional. And don't nobody understand. I'm not connected with nobody. I don't feel like I fit here. I don't fit with nobody. It's, it, it, it's all of this stuff. You're isolated in every way. Not just physically, emotionally, spiritually. You don't even feel like you're connected with God. You don't feel like you just isolate. You feel disconnected. A lot of times you start fighting people when you feel like that. Because now you think everybody's against you. Don't nobody care. They're against you. They're not for you. And so you begin to fight. You begin to fight or take flight. You, take, you begin to fight or take flight. And so you begin to feel like we're the only people that's struggling with this. I don't know. God just gave up. Just throw this in. One of the things my sister said is, she got a Facebook page and she never get on it, right? She never get on it. You know that, Mary. She never get on it. You know why? She told me the other day, she said, I don't get up there because it sent me straight into depression. She don't even, the people if she know what, she take on, it, 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 it activate her mental health. It initiate, it spark mental health in her just getting on Facebook. It, it'll, just, it'll just throw her off. Just looking at the problems of people, the news, and I'll listen to everybody bring it and set her off and just set her off. Thank you, people talking about you. Oh, all kind of stuff. That's what she told me. One thing I'm going to tell you, and this guy, I'm going to tell you, if you ever get in that state, stay off Facebook. Amen. Mm-hmm. Stay off Facebook. Yeah. Stay off Facebook. Or you will set yourself up. You will set yourself up. And so uh, Kings 19.10 say this, I have a jealous, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of you, your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And so listen, <coughs> he felt alone. He felt alone. He also, he also talked about what he did for God. So I guess because he felt he did something for God, he shouldn't go through nothing. <laughs> I paid my tithes every week. I, I went to church every Sunday. I was faithful to the church, God. And I was faithful to you. And I prayed every day. And I, uh, and I fed meals. And I, Why am I going through this? Come on, can we talk about it? Huh? Are we all just said it? I just said it too. Somebody lay your hands on me. I just said it too. But you, what you do for God, what that got to do with the things that come in your life? As a matter of fact, a lot of times the valley experience is what gives you wisdom. You don't learn on the mountaintop. You be too busy celebrating on the mountaintop. But down in the valley, you got to pick some keys up. You got to develop some character. You got to develop some tenacity. You get your fight back in the valley. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. You get your fight back in the valley. You get to put it. You say you bad? Show me you bad. You say you anointed? Show me you anointed. Huh? Am I right? Yeah. Let's move to the next. We got three more we got. Yeah, is this good or no? Yeah. All right. The fourth thing I want you to know is this. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. And I work in this field, and I'm not an expert. Y'all know I'm not an expert, right? But I'm a professional, and I'm a man of God. But I'm not an expert. But I'm, I see tons and tons of people come in. Just different names, same story. Different names, same story. But yet we feel alone and say nobody understands. We say nobody understands. And that's the trick of the enemy. That you're special and, and, and unique in your own trouble. There's no new thing under the sun, is what God said, though, right? There's no new th- thing that's under, that, that's under the sun. That's uncommon to man. Huh? And so I want to let you know you're not alone. Especially if you're saved. How can you be saved and alone? How can you be saved and alone? That means the, the God that we serve already resides inside of us. How can I be alone when God is inside of me? And the scriptures say, greater than he that's in me, that's in the world. And so I got to dominate from within what's going on without. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Me, 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 me
God said, I saved you to reach somebody else. And you sit on me, me, me. Me, me, me. Me, God. If you stay like that, God can't use you. Yeah. You will be cut off. Because you're not producing nothing. And so the blessing falling to you, but not falling through you. We got saved to be a blessing. Not just to take all the blessings. To be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah. And so he said, I got 7,000 more. Don't feel like you're alone. I got a tribe for you. I got people that's on one accord of what you, they believe with, uh, they believe in me. And you connect yourself to these people. And by the way, find somebody else to help. People always want a church type in here, right? People don't want church type. I tell them to go to the, to uh, uh, anywhere out on, on the corner where we feed us up, and they ain't going. But what do you mean? Oh, you just want the church thing? But we going out here, you, you didn't want to go there. Oh, you want people to see you. That, that's what it is, right? Yeah, I'm telling you, all the time. People are like, oh, you want to go? I said, all right, we're going to feed this, and we're going to go to the old folks home. Huh? God didn't tell me that. Hmm. Hell, he tell me. I mean, you just told me you God called you and all that. I tell you to go out there. You said, man, God didn't tell you that. God didn't tell you nothing. You don't even know God. You got emotional God. You want to do what you feel. You your own God. Everything God told me to do, I didn't even want to do it in the beginning. Let me tell y'all that. I didn't go to the jail speaking to them. I didn't want to do it. Go do this. Go do I didn't start a church. I didn't want to do it. I was like, for what? I ain't no pastor. I ain't want to speak. I didn't like people. Let me tell you the truth. <laughs> Can I tell y'all the truth? Can I tell y'all the truth? I told you, Mary knew me like, and I was a huh, cussing, and Mary was a bad. I'll tell you, I ain't with no people. I ain't talking to you. Like, don't talk to you. Who you talking to? Like, the woman. Yeah, don't talk to me. Who you looking at, man? And he said, you know, he changed, and I'm like, God, you crazy, dog. Talk like crazy, because I ain't with people. People. <laughs> And so everything he told me to do, I didn't want to do it. But I submitted to him. That's why I say, not my will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. You can't serve God doing your own will. Doing what seemingly is right to a man. Look, it's a, look, look, you can do what seemingly is right, but the ways thereof is death. You can do what you think is right, and you'll end up dying. You'll do what's right. And Keith's talking about people doing what's right in their own mind. And you think it's right, you gotta convince people that you're right and there ain't nowhere in the Bible that you're right. I said, hold I don't know how I got to Y'all get me in trouble. <laughs> Number five, it's good to get up. Ah! Number five, it's good to get up. You may be knocked down, but you're not knocked out. It's good to get up. Rumble, young man, rumble. Rumble, young woman, rumble. Ah. <laughs> Thank you, God. Hey, get back up. Get back up. Get back up. Verse 5 says, And as he lay there, lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Listen, how do you know that's depression? Because my first thing to go is your appetite. Mm -hmm. Huh? You eat. You ain't sleeping good. You can't eat. You missing meals. You missing meals. You don't even know you missing meals. You at work. You are You're like, you get home. You're like, man, I didn't eat today. <laughs> huh? He said, get up and eat. He says, get up and eat. Get up and eat. Now I'm going to tell you about rest. It's absolutely important to, to take rest and time off. We need that. If you're tired, just take the rest. Catch up on sleep. However, the number one way of prolonging a low season is to stay down. You want to determine how long you're going to be depressed? Stay down. Huh? If you wanted to stop, you're going to have to make a decision to get up and stop it. Huh? So what determines how long you're going to be sleeping in the bed and cutting the lights out at night? Huh? The, the longer you lay down, the longer it's going to take you to come out. And so he said, get up. Get up and eat. He said, well, my stomach don't. Well, eat a cracker or something. Hey, look, look, look at some ginger, right? Eat something so faint that God, I know that you're able to do a secret in the work. I'm going to try to I eat a crock or something. I'm getting up. Get up. Do what you, what you say you can't do. Because you're doing it in the power of God. Because he'll give you the power to do that thing that you can't do. That's why when I'm weak, I am strong. Because it's not me that's in me. It's not me that's doing it, but it's him that is in me. Mm 
man. Hey, and so I'm moving in the spirit realm. And listen, only because I'm in agreement with God and I can't even do it on my own, but so he's going to do it through me because I'm agreeing with him. <laughs> I'm agreeing with him. And so it's working. It's working because I submitted to him. I agree with him. I'm a push. I'm a press. I'm a cry. I'm a rock. I'm a scream. I'm a call. But I'm a get up. Mm -hmm. Hey, God, I'm out. Y'all can get me in trouble. And so, the key is knowing when enough is enough and when it's time to get up. I can't lay here no more. This ain't doing nothing. This is killing me. I ain't fed my kids. I ain't gave them nothing. I called off of work. You know, I ain't even put my makeup on. I ain't took a shower in three days. I ain't even took a shower. I don't feel like taking a shower. I ain't said nothing to my wife. I stink and I still can't get out of bed. Just be, I done been there. I'm telling you, I've been there. I smell myself. I'm like, I ain't taking no shower. I just sit right there. And I know I'm good. I'm like, good God. And, oh God. And I'm like, I'm not, I ain't getting taking no shower. And I lay there. I did that when I was detoxing in the kitchen. Oh God, I'm sweating. I'm stinking. Like about five days and went back. I'm like, bed soaking wet. Right? And I think the cat knows something wrong because the cat won't get out the bed. I'm like, why the cat? I call why the cat still sitting right there? Is, are you something wrong? Yeah, I'm dumb sitting right there. I'm not feeling good. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, and I'm stinking. Then I, and I won't feel in my best, but you know what I said one day? I can't, I can't get up out of here. Like, I can't get laying right here. I can't let you lay there till your back hurts. Look, your back hurt now. Amen. I'll be like, hey, now, I can't lay there right now. And then you say, you know what? I don't know what I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna take a shower or something. Look, at least I'm gonna take a shower or something. I've been there. Huh? I've been there. You take the shower, right? You're like, this ain't bad, boy. He said, look, look, that can smell good. I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna go to the kitchen. And then you go get the next day they got a little bit of water or something. Man. Huh? If you didn't think like me, you're talking to yourself. Yeah, I just wanna make it like, just give me an hour. I wanna make it. Just um give me two more days. I'm gonna get through it. I know it's coming. I'm gonna feel better. Just, uh huh? I just gotta make it. I just I think I can. I think I can. Am I telling the truth? I just go well, just just get me through this one more. One more thing, God. I, I promise. I ain't going to do it no more. But you got to get back up, right? Yeah. Number six, having, having an angel helps. What do you mean? People who love you. People who love you. People who genuinely care about you. Listen. Not people when you down and you complain and you talk and they be like, yeah, girl. Uh -huh. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. If they agree with what you're saying, you don't need them. They are angel of death. That's what they is. They are angel of death. They got to be the kind of people. You got this, girl. No matter, now, that might be in your mind. I don't know what's going on, but you're bigger than that. You, you're better than that. You, you can come out of that. You don't got to. Listen, you know God used you. I see, I see God use you. People that remind you of good things and great things, God. Not people say, yeah, you right. You, yeah, I see how you feel like that. Well, shut up and go to hell. <laughs> go to hell. Is that, can I say it in the church? Go to hell. You know why? Because you're trying to send me to hell. You're trying to send me to hell. You're trying to keep me in this condition. You're not even trying to help me. You say you're trying to help me. You ain't trying to help me. You agreeing with me staying here. You coming in agreeing with me still feeling like this and you act like you're my friend? The devil is alive. Go to hell. Have somebody that's going to speak life into you. A person, even if they see something wrong, they can find something good to say. Yeah. You got this, baby. You done made it this far. You done made it through that, baby. You can do it again. God got you. I'm praying for you. Come on, let's pray right now. Somebody that's going to tell you something instead of keep calling you talking about some food system. Mm -hmm. And fuel to the fire. Talking about they like and fuel to the fire. You die. And they helping you die. They helping you die. 
And you my bud. And you my bud. How are you my bud? I'm telling you I'm trying to do better and you, you still keep bringing this foolish system. I'm telling, I'm telling you, man. I'm struggling. I know I look a mess, but I want to do way I look. Man, you must keep bringing me back to this place. You don't love me. You don't love me. How can you love me? You keep bringing me. How can you love me? You love to see me sick. You love to see me depressed. You love coming to my aid because it makes you feel good about you. You using my sickness to make you feel good about you? Mm. That's it. You sick. Mm. Go to hell. Straight to hell. Do not pass gold, don't collect $200 and not bust it wide open. I know I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Y'all crazy. <laughs> this is the last one. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. <laughs> but I'm gonna write about it. I'm right about it. The last thing is this. You have a purpose. Each one of us have a purpose. God told him to connect with his people to find Elijah, and he has some more job. You got a job to do. This ain't about you just getting blessings and feeling good and showing up to church and paying tithes. No. That doesn't that's a lot. That's about a kingdom. We all want to sign it. We all been passing through this place. You got stuff to do. You got a book to write. You got a sermon to preach. You got a song to sing. You got something to do. You wasting time. You wasting time, and while you wasting time, people out there die. Somebody's life depend on you, and it's inside of you. What you may say, what you may sing, what you may write, and while you sitting here depressed, you holding up their future. Good God Almighty! You holding up somebody else's future. You holding up somebody else's life. We all got a purpose. We all been created for specific things. And in the fullness of time, it's going to manifest itself. But you got to stay the course. You cannot give up. You cannot feel defeated. You, you got to connect with people that encourage you. Or if you even think like David, David encouraged himself. Mm -hmm. And so you got to have some fight inside of you. You got to have some kind of fight inside of you. When we was on that side, it won't nothing to, to pull out a knife or gun. It won't nothing to smack a fool or down. We was right or die. Now we get on this side, we all weak and frail, and we ain't fighting nothing. Ooh, the devil did it. And all this stuff. Shut up and win. Win, win, win. Yes. Yes. Dominate. Dominate. That's the kind of people you connect to. You don't need people that's finding problems. You need people that's finding solutions. Somebody, don't tell me the we take the bring problem for. Bring me a solution. How can we help this world to be a better place? How can we help our community? How can we help our church? How can we help your family? How can we help my family? Well, don't I ain't sitting here wasting on conversation. You keep talking about what's wrong. You wasting my time. And so we all got a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. We all got a purpose. Even in your suicidal thoughts and your depressed days, I want you to remember that you got a purpose, that God has a plan for you, that he, listen, he knew the plan, and it's not to harm you, but it's for a hope and for his future. Huh? You got greatness deep down inside of you, but you got to dig deep. In order for the treasure to be uncovered, you got to start digging. Huh? You got to start digging more and more, and you're going to go through some things. You're going to go through some valleys. Huh? You're going to go through some dips, huh? but be a good chill, huh? because he 